Welcome to today's COVID-19 update. We're speaking with the Honorable Minister of Health, Dr. Frank Anthony. Minister Anthony, again, thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank you once again for having me on your program. So let's begin with what's in the news. We're talking Region 6 and Oriel and Ciparuta. Could you give us an update? Well, right now, um, we have done a lot of testing in Ciparuta and Oriala. Uh, we are getting back those results. As of today, we have identified at least 35 positive cases in Ciparuta, and we'll continue to monitor the situation there. We have uh, sent in a medical team over the last couple of days. They have been doing swabbing for the community, and we'll keep a, a medical presence on the ground. We have been working with the village council to ensure that people understand uh, the, you know, how they need to comply and so forth. And I think so far we have been getting a lot of cooperation in terms of um, you know, the villagers complying. I know that is one thing that we've, you've often referred to, the compliance and support coming from the community. And we always go back to Kubana, where um, it's sort of like the blueprint. Um, if it comes to that, those measures would be implemented in uh, Ciparuta. Well, we have started. Um, the only thing we haven't done is to uh, lock down the community. but. I think among themselves, they have decided to restrict movements um, of the persons who have, well, uh, people within the community in Siparuta. Um, there have been uh, discussions in the village council about a possible lockdown, and at this point we don't think that is necessary, but the, I think among the villagers they have already started to discuss this. What we have advised them medically is for those persons who we have um, identified as being positive, that they isolate themselves. And I think they are complying with that, and the medical team on the ground has been talking to them to ensure that this happens. All right. I know, and you're working along with the CDC, who would have set up in the community as well. What other sort of um, assistance is being given to the community? But so far, we have been working with the region, uh, Region 6, and our focus has been more on the medical side of things to ensure that uh, we have a good medical response, that we, we are able to do the testing, that we have enough medication at the health center, and so forth. So, so far, our efforts have been in that direction. All right. I know we usually uh, touch on the medical team specifically, and I've uh, wanted to ask you this a while. Have we had any case where our medical team or anybody on the team maybe would have been exposed or anything like that? How is the team itself going? Uh, right now, we don't have any person uh, from the medical team who has tested positive, but we have had cases in the past where a number of persons might have been exposed to patients and uh, became positive. Or they believed that they might have been exposed, so they were in quarantine. So we've had cases like that. But currently, uh, we don't have anything of, this, uh, of that sort right now. Uh, but in the past, we've had some, some cases. Okay. Uh, from uh, Ciparuta, let's go to St. Cuthbert Mission. What is the update in that community? Well, St. Cuthbert's Mission, they, they've been doing quite well. Um, we had identified a few symptomatic cases, and they have been monitoring those persons because uh, we don't want those uh, symptoms to deteriorate, so we've been paying extra attention to those persons. Uh, the cases have come down because most persons would have met the 10 days requirement and they remain asymptomatic. So I expect that during this week we'll see a lot more discharges and um, I'm told that uh, during this week it will reduce to about 16 cases or, or so. Um, so, so far, uh, I think the team on the ground has done a splendid job, and uh, we want to thank the community for also uh, cooperating with us and bringing the uh, pandemic within that community under control. So, we are not out of the, the woods as yet, but certainly there has been great improvement um, with 
uh, St. Cuthbert's mission. And we expect that in another few days that most of the persons who have tested positive um, would be discharged. Okay, uh, just for confirmation, uh, the restriction has extended. We have extended it by a week, so we in, by next weekend um, that should be lifted. All right, uh, just an update on Region 1. How is it going uh, with the communities there? Warapoka, we have 22 cases that we've been monitoring, and um, we haven't seen an increase in cases, which is a good thing. Um, and we'll monitor those 22, make sure that they remain isolated, and once they don't have any signs or symptoms, uh, they would be discharged from care as well. As we're on this particular subject, could we um, get a quick update on Bartica as well? Bartica, we, um, we have had a number of cases uh, with Bartica and the surrounding communities. I think there are currently about 52 cases right now that we are actively um, monitoring. And uh, again, similar things. We put people in self-isolation. Some cases we have a number of persons in institutional isolation, and we are going to monitor them for the period and then discharge them. Uh, we don't have any symptomatics uh, in Bartica. Uh, most of the people that we are monitoring are asymptomatic. Okay. All right. Let's uh, take you from that and uh, just a bit of focus on the Smart Hospital. Now, you visited Diamond uh, on the weekend. Could you give us an update as to where we are? Because I know you're hoping for a handover by next month. Yes, and that would be um, because the contractor has until sometime next year to finish off the works at Diamond. But I think they have made a steady progress um, at Diamond. Most of the works have been completed. There are just a few things that they have to finish off, and we feel that they can do so um, for December. Uh, we have since uh, spoken to the contractor and uh, the supervisor, and um, I, I'm confident that most of the work within the building uh, can be completed for a December handing over so that we can re return uh, the hospital back to service. They would, however, have to do some additional works in the compound itself, so that would take a bit longer, uh, maybe a, a few more months. But I am satisfied that within the building itself that they would be able to complete all that is necessary um, for December. So we are looking forward to resuming um, almost full service with the Diamond Hospital by December and um, we are going to be uh, working uh, with some of the agencies to see what additional services we can add. As you know the hospital, one of the reasons we are calling it the smart hospital is because it's now climate resilient, meaning that it wouldn't be flooded. We're utilizing solar power uh, which means sustainable energy, so most of the building is being powered uh, by solar power. We also have um, come up with a plan for the utilization of water from rain, and so all these things would help to make the, the hospital run more efficiently. And, and of course, we have retrofitted the hospital, so rather than you having lots of rooms that are very cluttered, um, the ambience of the hospital has changed, the flow, the efficiency with which people can get from one point to another has improved drastically. So I think these are welcome changes that uh, persons who normally utilize the facility would find when they um, when the hospital comes back on stream. Of course. Uh, two things. What essentially does this mean for that part of the country as in the East Bank and then uh, before they, this, this actually started we did not have COVID-19 and I noted that you made some suggestions uh, to deal with certain aspects of this. Could you share? Again, um, we'll have to make some additional provisions uh, to accommodate people who would come to the hospital because the waiting area is very limited and the original design for the hospital had limited space for um, waiting. 
So to accommodate patients using COVID guidelines, we'll have to build um, a facility in the compound. So when people come in, those who are for outpatient clinics, they will come there, um, they will be registered and everything, and then um, they would be called from there into the actual hospital. And this, this is just trying to take precautions so as people using the facility can remain safe. All right. And of course, what does this mean for the East Bank? You know, no longer the hustle and bustle to come to town, I would imagine. Yes, and um, we are also going to equip the hospital. Uh, one of the things that we'll be putting in is a digital x-ray. So uh, although on the East Bank you wouldn't have a radiologist, um, those x-rays that are done there can be read by a radiologist at Georgetown Hospital, and those results can be made known to the doctors there. So we, you will see some improvement in uh, the range of services that we can offer, both at the level of labs, pharmacy, diagnostic services. Um, so we plan to improve these things. The range is going to be extended, and therefore more people would benefit uh, from what we are doing at at the hospital. So it's not just a beautification of the place, it is also extending services. And um, that, that's just a start because we intend to add additional services over the next couple of years. All right, and the next uh, facility to be upgraded would be where? The next facility that we're looking at is the Lenora Hospital. And uh, we have already signed a contract and um, we're going to start very soon uh, the, the process of retrofitting that hospital. Again, this is a project that we have been working with the British government on, and uh, they, they are providing the funding to ensure that we can retrofit uh, the Lenora Hospital to make sure that it's also climate resistant, energy efficient, um, has proper flow, and it's, you know, in its utilization of um, space and things like that. So that's the purpose of the retrofitting. All right. Uh, can I ask you for an update on the Ocean View facility? Ocean View, um, we are awaiting one of the contractors to install a suction a machine because for us to activate the ICU area, we want to not just have all the, the medical gases and so in place, but there's a requirement to have uh, centralized suction. Um, for them to install the machine, they had to build a special little building to house the machine, so that has been completed. And um, we are now awaiting the final installation of that machine. I'm hoping that within the next day or two that that would be completed, and we'll start the process of moving uh, some of the ICU patients across to Ocean View. Hopefully the hospital would get that done uh, before the end of the week. Okay. Uh, Minister, we have several training that's going on right now. Just uh, an update. We've had one that was supposed to be completed, I believe, the 20th or coming down to that period. Could you just give us a brief update on those? Well, the one that was completed on the, um, on the 20th uh, really is one where a number of doctors were invited participate uh, with the government of Chile because they ran an extensive course on COVID-19. So a number of our doctors participated in that. Uh, we have had a team from the U.S. Uh, that came in and went out to a number of our regional hospitals and they were doing practical training um, with our doctors and nurses at these facilities. Some of that training include um, working with the ventilators and so forth. So I think that's quite helpful. Uh, we've done training for persons in the media and uh, we want to have an ongoing effort to help to uh, get more people to understand uh, COVID-19 because we feel if the media is um, informed and have knowledge of the disease, more detailed knowledge, then they would be able to utilize that knowledge to better inform the public. So we'll have these ongoing sessions with the media and um, 
so that they can keep the public better informed. We are also uh, in the process of designing a comprehensive training program for persons who would be delivering the COVID-19 vaccines in Guyana. And so that program right now is being worked upon. We'll develop um, some workbooks and we have started the process of identifying um, the persons to be trained, the regions from which they are coming from and so forth so that that uh, program can be um, rolled out very quickly. Uh, we expect that by early December we will start the training of persons who would be administering this vaccine. In addition to that, um, sometime during this week, we'll be starting another training, which would deal with the rollout of the antigen um, rapid test. And this would be conducted by the company themselves, the manufacturer of the test, Abbott, um, would be doing this uh, training online for a number of trainers who would then retrain their team. So we're expecting to have the uh, RHOs involved, persons from our labs, persons from um, the Georgetown Hospital, who would all be involved in that uh, training session. So that's another uh, training that we'll be doing. And um, once that is completed, we will then start rolling out the rapid antigen tests. All right. Uh, as we get ready to wrap up, how is your uh, COVID curb going? And have you had uh, many complaints from citizens or so in terms of gathering? Well, I think the uh, COVID curb has been going quite well. Um, there are areas certainly that we can improve. And we have had a task force meeting where we look at some of these areas. And the Prime Minister has instructed that we um, go into some of those areas and intensify our efforts. So you would see some renewed efforts in a number of communities, especially those where we have seen uh, increases in cases. We want to um, up the education in those areas, make sure that people are complying and wearing masks and, and things like that. Uh, so that's, that's going to be an ongoing exercise. We want to um, really uh, talk to responsible citizens and businesses uh, to really come on board because we are going into the Christmas season and if we behave responsibly, we would be able to stabilize the amount of cases that we are having and we wouldn't see a surge of cases. But if we behave irresponsibly and we want to go to bars, we want to socialize, we want to be with friends, then we can easily see a spike of cases which can overwhelm our current health systems. If that happens, it can really um, lead to a number of problems for us. So we want to urge people and businesses to put in place uh, measures to help us with the reduction of these cases. And those measures would include, one, to ensure that people coming to your business wear a mask, that people coming into your business sanitize their hands, and that you try to have social distancing within your business, because if you have too many people crowding up, uh, they can easily get infected because we don't know who are the carriers of this um, infection who might be asymptomatic. So if people are going to be in crowded areas, there is that possibility of being exposed. So again, we want businesses to help us. Um, some of them have been doing a fantastic job with the uh, measures that they have put in place at their businesses. And that, I think, has worked well. But we want more people to comply because if all of us, if all the, the business owners put these measures in place, then we are helping to prevent the disease from uh, transmitting. And we also want 
people themselves to take on responsibility. By now, every single person in Guyana ought to know how this thing is transmitted, and therefore they must know that wearing a mask helped to prevent COVID-19. So we want people to comply with wearing their mask. We don't really want to go um, identify people and take them before the courts. We want to prevent that, but to, uh, if we're going to prevent that, then people have to be compliant. And therefore, um, once again, we are urging everyone uh, to help us. We know that traditionally people want to celebrate Christmas and have you know, parties and so forth. Well, this is going to be a Christmas with a difference. And it's not only for Guyana, this is happening around the globe. And everybody um, who are sensible enough are using their common sense to prevent infections from reoccurring or occurring. And the only way you can do that is that you have to abide by the rules that have been set up. Okay, Minister Anthony again, thank you so much for speaking with us. Thank you. Okay. Well, that's it for today's COVID-19 update. We, of course, spoke with the Honorable Minister of Health, Dr. Frank Anthony. Remember, for more information, you can log on to our website, dpi.gov.gy, and, of course, the Ministry of Health website as well, health.gov.gy, and, of course, our social media platforms.